Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie, and today we are back with another day. Okay, so we're eating at the same place that I've already eaten before with Tiffany and with my fiance last time we were here, and it's called Da Andrea. Literally so good. So we have their um, squid ink pasta, the black noodles, then we have a carbonara pasta, meatballs on bread, we have a gnocchi mm. and pesto sauce, we have spinach ravioli and a black truffle sauce, we've got a tiramisu, three macaroons, a warm octopus salad, and some mussels wow. in a spicy tomato sauce. Sauce. Which like speaking of spicy tomato sauce, do you know what else is spicy? The fact that I just got the newest iPhone 14 and I'm so excited to take spicy pictures on here of spicy food. Okay. That's what I meant, okay? But um, I just... So sorry to my neighbor. You're like, did you just freaking throw a new phone? Are you kidding me? Yes, I did. I'm not even gonna lie, even with my case to my phone case, sometimes my heart flutters a little bit when I drop my phone because it's like been so ingrained in my head that phones are fragile and I have to remind myself case to is just built different. They have the latest technology of EcoShock in their iPhone 14 impact series. The EcoShock technology provides drop protection from 11 and a half feet. That's more than two of me. Wait, made. I thought before it was 10 feet. Now it's 11 yeah. and a half. Upgraded. Okay. Upgraded. Yes. It's five times the military standard and add to that, it's made out of 65% recycled and plant-based material. And if it feels like it can't get any better, it does. My mom is so skeptical. Like she's like, oh my God, I know this phone case, but never, it's not thick enough to be safe. And then her phone got stolen and that was a whole story and she realized the power of case to buy. And they're so pretty. You can really elevate your style. You can make it your phone case case, your phone case, you could do a picture collage, you could do your initials, or you could even get one of their cases that's already designed for you, which I love because they work with so many designers from so many different diversities and backgrounds, and you can see it in the phone cases. It's just so unique. They're MagSafe compatible. You can throw on a power bank, a MagSafe wallet. The cases are wireless compatible, and they have really cute accessories. I'm obsessed with their freaking phone strap. You just throw it on your neck, and it's so cute. And the best part is, case by actually recycles old phone cases, separates them, but they like grind it down and they turn them into these really cool, really pretty phone cases. Make sure to check out Casetify, link to the description, or go to casetify.com slash bis to get 15% off your Casetify phone case. That's casetify.com slash bis to get 15% off your new favorite phone case. And thank you Casetify for sponsoring today's video and let's get into the food. Ooh. Wow, are you guys excited about this? Oh man, I wanna try the black pasta. Okay, let's get into the squidding pasta because yeah. we're on a squidding hype right now oh, because of uh it's, spooktober yeah spooktober oh yeah okay i don't know how to you know what should i just use my chopsticks yes use your chopsticks but i feel like people get offended but Why? these make so much noise look at me honey look at me <laughs> no i want to try elegant way no it's so good mm. Mm. Ah, uh, nah, it's too slow. Okay, compared to the squid ink fried chicken, this is so much better. What? That chicken was good. This is so much better. Let's I love see. it. Mmm. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Gnocchi and pesto. Wow. Try Softer that. than like the normal pasta, like right? real. It's mm. delicate. I don't know what this tastes like though. No squid ink? <laughs> it's so light though. Tastes like almost like a wine sauce of mm. some sort. Mmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. This no. is amazing, Dan Dan. These are what octopus? is it? Octopus? Do you like octopus? Uh, mm-hmm. It's really good. I don't like octopus as much, but Do you like calamari? Mm. I actually don't like calamari. Like most people don't like it. Calamari you have to get so fresh. Like it's gotta be freshly fried. Mm. Otherwise this like the fried skin starts peeling off. Do you know what I mean? And mm. it's soggy and it's like two textures. Okay, look at these okay. spinach raviolis. They look like little boats or like little hats. <laughs> this is not so cute, like a it paper looks like bow. Leaf. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh man, I don't know where to start. Like this? Mm. Oh my god. Oh my god. How is it? Oh my god. Boom. Oh my god. It's so good. Is the meatball good? You have to try it. Okay, I'm gonna taste oh, it. Oh, this is truffle, babe. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm upset. That's truffle? You can taste it. Yeah, the sauce is truffle. But it's spinach ravioli with a truffle sauce. Mm. Meatball. Wow. Wow. Oh yeah, you're right. You, you taste it, right? Mm-hmm. I love it. How much was this green thing? Mm. 
What green thing? The truffle thing. The raviolis, like yeah. thirty-five dollars for five ravioli. I'm That's honestly seven dollars. Sorry. That's seven dollars. Right there. One meatball. No, the green thing. <laughs> one. One. <laughs> one piece. Yeah, what you're eating right now. So what's the total? That's thirty-five dollars. Oh my god. One meatball? I thought it was gonna be a lot of meatballs. Okay. Uh huh. Eighteen dollars. I got three meatballs. That's six dollar meatball. Mm-hmm. Jesus. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Does it taste amazing, Dan? Is this the best meatball hey, I've ever had? It is good, though. It is good, but <laughs> here's the thing about the Andrea. You should go there because I remember mm. when we got the octopus salad last time, it was Better. big. And it was big. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a big full plate of it. What happened this time? I guess maybe to go, they just lower it. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. If you guys have not watched episode one, part one of um, our approaching science. <laughs> okay, you gotta explain to Daniel. What okay. That is. Approaching science was this TV show in China back in the day. You know how like Asians are super superstitious? Oh, yes. Are you superstitious? Is your mom superstitious? Yes. What is I like, mean, <laughs> no. what's like something they taught you? Carrots. I mean, I'm sure it's good. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's true, but carrots is good for your eyes. You can't turn on your fan when you're with your door closed, mm -hmm. but it's proven that she said eating you can't vegetable. have your door closed. Like nothing's wrong with that. Mm -hmm. He said eating vegetables is a super. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my god. It's okay. God. It's okay. It's okay. Oh okay. My god. Approaching science is this Chinese TV show back in the day where they were trying to get rid of all the superstitions. Mm -hmm. So. Anytime there was like a myth or an urban legend or a superstition people had, the show would go and investigate and they would come up with a scientific reason for everything. So it's like debunking the superstitions, right? Yeah. And it's so it was, fascinating. It was like at one point the most popular show in China. Like and ranked number one. Number one. And it was ongoing for probably like a decade. Yeah. Almost all Chinese my age growing up, you probably heard about it or seen a couple episodes. Mm -hmm. It's like that big. Apparently, a lot of these episodes, the stories are so bizarre. <laughs> Basically, they set it up at like a very creepy, eerie, because it's superstition, right? It's mm -hmm. like something really creepy and eerie, and then they would debunk it. They would give you the real answer. And then the answer, a lot of time, are really bizarre. So that's the whole premise of okay. the show. So the only way this works, like I said for episode one, is if you guys guess what really happened before I tell you. That's it. So <laughs> let's get into it. I'm so excited. So use your brain. <laughs> trying to figure out what Hold truly on, is going on. on. <laughs> All right. I'm ready. Okay, so the first one that we're talking about is a man that just always set on fire. This took place okay. in 2007. It's the man whose ass was on fire. It's very interesting, <laughs> okay? And it's such a... His ass was on fire. It was the hottest ass ever. Just the ass. Yeah, I'm dead ass. Like with no oil, nothing? Nothing. The ass was so iconic, the fire was chronic. Oh. You like it? The, okay. You're born to be a rapper. <laughs> Thank you so much. So everyone in this village is freaking out. I mean, the whole province was freaking out, really. An 80-year-old man would just burst into motherfucking flames at any given moment. Probably like three to four times a day. He would just burst into flames. <laughs> Like burst into flames, but and he's he not would, burnt. yeah, he would be fine. His what? body would still be fine. Mainly, it was his clothes that would just burst into flames, and he would have to run to take off all of his clothes so he didn't burn to death. He's a torch guy. Yeah, he's From a torch Fantastic guy. Four. Yes. So, so let me tell you how it happened, right? Before we get into the wild speculations, Mr. Who was ninety years old. Okay, he was like eighty-seven, but at this point, we're gonna round up. Ninety years old, lived with his whole family in the village, like his whole family, <coughs> not just his kids. Kids, not just his wife, but like his kids, kids, his grandchildren, like everybody, everybody lived there. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was this one big happy family, except grandpa would turn into a live bonfire show every day and the whole family would freaking freak out and add to that, they would have to bring buckets of water anytime they were going out with the grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> but they were also so stressed financially because oh, once oh, his clothes were financial. burnt, you know? You always have to pay back. Yes. So he'd have to get like three sets of new clothes every day. <laughs> what? In yeah. The world? Three to four times a day. I mean, it was rough. So the approaching science team, they heard about it. They went to the village, very skeptical because, I mean, this isn't even in line with spontaneous human combustion, which, have you guys heard of that? There have been a few people in history, allegedly, okay, it's not like scientifically proven, but they've just burst into flames. Like people have exploded before. Yeah, what what was that? I read, I heard There's about no way. that, but I don't know. Like self, yeah, ignited. 
like explode, yeah. like your body exploded. Mm-hmm. It just start burning into ashes. Because I guess what they were trying to say is like the human body is crazy. There's so many different systems and so many different mechanisms going on inside of you, mm-hmm. and then it just catches fire one day and you explode. <laughs> Why would the grandpa just put himself on fire? Like, did he enjoy it? Is there like a pleasure? He doesn't want to be on fire. He doesn't know why he's on fire. Oh, it just happens. Yeah. Out of nowhere. What do you think it happened here, then? then? You said on his ass, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe there's something in his fart. <laughs> Definitely fart. <laughs> something with fart, and he mm-hmm. ate spicy food. And so anything with spicy, like mm-hmm. hot pot. I don't know. It'd be that hot pot. Ninety-year-olds need to stay away from hot pot. Okay. <laughs> Did you know that somewhere in this world, we are walking around, and somebody has the smelliest farts in the world, and they don't even know it. Have you thought about uh-huh. that? I read a Reddit thread that was like, think about it. There's no measure. You would never know that you have the stinkiest farts in the world. But someone, one person in this world is walking around with the stinkiest farts in the world. It's kind of crazy, no? Do you think about who has the stinkiest fart here? It could be you. <laughs> it could possibly be me or you. Don't go on a first date with Dan Dan to hot pot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like Panda Express first date, yeah. and then we'll advance it. <laughs> we'll advance slowly. It yes. gets stinkier in the car on the way back home. Anyway, back to the story. So you think it's like the farts. What do you think? No, I think it's the fart. Oh, both of you guys think it's the no, fart. No, I think it's the fart. <laughs> I, I said it first. You guys are like a bickering married couple right now. <laughs> then, then you need to think of something else. Well, you can't just steal his answer, bro. It was my answer. Okay, fine. Check the tape. Something to do with his intest- intestines. Mm, okay. I mm. thought maybe he was getting all of his clothes from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Who's like, because you know how they have like weird fibers in clothing? Maybe mm. it was like inflammable fibers. Maybe he would like be cooking and he would burst into flames or something. But only on his ass? So there's yeah, something wrong with the clothing. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was the clothing because he's not burned, right? Mm, so weird. I think okay. it's weird, but fiery ass and farts make sense. Back to the story. The approaching science team, they were skeptical when they went and they sat next to this old man and asked him, Mr. Who, tell us about, you know, the first time that you were on fire. And they said Mr. Who looked back at them with <laughs> horror in his eyes. His eyes were moist with tears. He looked scared at his own situation. Well, I was sitting in a chair and suddenly my pants caught on fire. I quickly found water to douse the fire, but I just doused my pants and then I found that my coat was on fire. I was on fire again. They're like, okay, this is really bizarre. Okay, this is a really bizarre explanation even. But then the producers, they started looking around the house and really sniffing and the whole house smelled like there had recently been a fire inside. So they agreed, we're gonna stay in the village. We're gonna figure out what the hell is wrong with Mr. Who. The night went by without a flame, without a fire, if you will. But after, the next morning, when the sun came out, they heard a scream come from Mr. Old Who's room, okay? They start running. The blanket that he was just sleeping with near his ass was on fire, had burst into flames. The family, they rush in, they see what's going on. They run, get two buckets of water. They douse the entire bed, put out the fire. The old man and the bed are drenched. And the family said that they would clean it up since Mr. Who is a little bit too old. They suggested he go sit outside in the courtyard while they clean. But sure enough, sitting outside right after this, Mr. Who's ass burst into flames again. (laughs) It was back-to-back fires. The time between the two bursts of flames was becoming smaller and smaller. It made the whole family nervous, and they started pleading the approaching science producers, you gotta do something. You gotta help us out. They put out the second fire. The chair in the courtyard was, like, scorched. Completely burned. What? The rest of the next day, he just kept bursting into flames. It was exhausting for the whole family and honestly the producers that were filming this whole thing. Anyway, the villagers in the area had some reasonings. I have a solution for it. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Just just don't wear pants. Have a bucket of water. Just sit in a bucket. Sit Sit in a bucket. (laughs) Mm. Or just don't wear pants. Well, don't wear pants is he lived with with his whole family, so. He could get arrested probably. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that's like... We gotta get a confession from another <laughs> subscriber tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the garage was up in flames! <laughs> no way this is true. Is this actually true? Yeah. Dude, they better have insurance. insurance? On the grandpa? Yeah. On the pants? What if they catch the house on fire? Mm. They live in a village, right? Or village. You think they get insurance in the village? I don't know, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> 
Farmer's insurance, maybe? Mm. Farmer's insurance. That was so good. <laughs> How was the macaron? And that's caramel? Mm. I love it. Try it, try it. It's not her first me. time ordering, yeah. <laughs> it, no, because I get this restaurant all the time for mm. macaroons. Mm. So oh, good. the coffee is good. Wow. The villagers had um, a theory on what was going on. Some said that the old man was in trouble. He had somehow offended the god of fire, and now he was being punished by the god of fire, who was hiding behind him to kill him, and would set his ass on fire with a little touch, mm -hmm. a little booty touch, right? Okay. Some said, no, this is a sign of good luck. Fire is good, which means this man is thriving. He has so much energy around him that the fire follows him. Mm -hmm. Now, the approaching science team obviously didn't believe either of these. They thought it was more consistent with spontaneous human combustion. But any time that spontaneous human combustion has allegedly happened, the person was badly burned or killed. Meanwhile, Mr. Who's situation feels like it's mainly just his clothes being burned. Mm -hmm. So that's the source of his fire. Probably it wouldn't be from his own body. Otherwise, he would have been burnt. There's like no way. So some of the producers thought, I mean, shit, I hate to say it. But the old man's probably lighting his ass on fire. Like he's probably gassing himself, okay? Maybe he's lost his marbles. Maybe he's senile. Maybe he's doing it as a cry for help or for attention. But like it's gotta be him. It was possible, but not really possible. Because Mr. Who was 90 years old, there's no way that he could light himself on fire over 500 times in the past couple of years without ever once not getting caught lighting himself on fire. 500 times? Yeah. You can do that every day and it'll be like two years. Mm hmm. Close to two years. Oh my god. Yeah, there's no way. I mean, why would he? Yeah, exactly. exactly. Like, why would he risk his life mm -hmm. and his family's life mm -hmm. just to do that? Nah. Yeah. There must weird. be an another way. Yeah, what do you guys think? I mean, I know you know, right? You know? Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, to create fire, you need a few things. You need something to ignite it. Mm -hmm. You need something to... Yeah, you need something to ignite it. Like fart plus something else. Fart plus a spark. Like a hairspray? As I am. No, hairspray, you still need a spark. Mm. You need something to ignite it. You know friction? You know, you put two stones together. Maybe Wait. two butt cheeks. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> oh! So his cheeks no. are just rubbing next to each other because no. they're so big? No, 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 no. <laughs> Or maybe he does it with like on a tree bark. So you're telling me grandpa is clapping his ass so hard. And maybe it's itchy. He got hemorrhoids. <laughs> Has anybody checked out his ass yet? <laughs> Who wants to volunteer? Not me. <laughs> Definitely not me. Oh my god. What? what? So good, right? Right? Oh my god. Oh. Now, to make it weirder, it was mostly his pants being set on fire. Not just his pants, but like his ass. The old man's ass was on fire. Now, it just didn't make sense to the producers. They were at a loss. But maybe this is an episode where they would just have to scrap it. There's no science behind it. It's kind of paranormal. There's... It's just a mystery. That is till the producers are like, no, we got to play back all the footage that we have so far because maybe, just maybe, we can see when he was set on fire. And if he just spontaneously bursts into flames, then that means, you know, we got to investigate that. So they keep watching all the footage and they found this one part that was very peculiar, right? Which is almost immediately after he was set on fire and the whole family is like rushing to save him and like pour water on him, there was a shot of one of the family members who, um... I mean, it was seemingly innocent of a shot, right? But uh, Mr. Who's granddaughter was in the back watching the production team freak out and watching the family freak out about another fire. And there was like a small little... <laughs> <laughs> like a smirk. Like a f***ing Sophie smirk? <laughs> there was a Sophie smirk. Sophie smirk. There was a... <laughs> How old is he? She looks like 10. She looks 10. Okay, that just makes sense. Little... Oh my god, that's and so it was just Sophie. Are you kidding me? about it right and the strange smile that made them all so suspicious because i mean this is right after mr who your 90 year old grandpa has caught on fire why are you <laughs> so they all helped to extinguish the flames which you know that would be the reason that the granddaughter would have a reason to smile like this and to add to that the granddaughter was the only one that was quote brave enough to sleep in the same room as mr who so she kept him company at night just in case he burst into flames at night oh my god yeah so the theory is, this little girl snuck a lighter and set her grandpa's ass on fire over $500. No <laughs> oh, way. <laughs> yes, and they even asked the family questions to verify. The only time that this grandpa did not catch on fire for an entire day or more was when he was out of town visiting other family members and the granddaughter wasn't there. Okay, but it gets crazier. It gets crazier, I'm not done. 
the granddaughter is trying to kill her own grandpa. That's the theory, right? It's all sick and twisted. What? The family was told by the producers their thoughts on what was happening. The producers are like, we think it's her. And they're like, we suggest that you guys bring her to a therapist mm -hmm. to talk about it. You know, she's like a little arson girl, a pyromaniac. And they said, we don't need a doctor. We'll just beat her up. What? <laughs> yeah. The family what? said that. Yeah, the family said no need. Yeah. No need for another medical bill. We'll just beat her up. That thank would you. be my grandma's answer. Yeah. Thank you. <gasps> so um, they're like, okay, well, thank you for letting us know and getting to the bottom of it. Please, um, where's my beating stick? You guys can leave now. Here's the door. So they're, re they're rushing the production out and um, so they can beat up their little child. <laughs> but the producers are trying to get them to talk to her. First, they asked her, why the hell are you setting your grandpa on fire? Huh? And this was her answer. <laughs> I really love grandpa. Okay, that's not really consistent with what you're doing, but go on. And I felt like, you know, he's gotten old and nobody was paying attention to him. You guys were all living your lives. Nobody was feeding him. Nobody spent time with him. He was being neglected. And he always talked about how nobody cared about him and how he was so lonely. Nobody made sure to see if he was healthy. And he missed being a normal human being. And he just felt old and left out. And all he had was me. And I heard this local superstition that if an old man catches fire, it means that he's a lucky star. So I thought that if he catches fire, then my family would pay attention to him because he's the lucky star of the family. <laughs> Okay, now I feel like she's being sweet now. <laughs> like she's sweet. I know it's so confusing. It's like the plot twist that nobody expected. <laughs> because, like, imagine how the grandpa feels. Imagine how he feels. He's like mother. Oh. All right, keep going. Keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, he's like, okay, I'll get the lighter. Uh -huh. <sighs> so the adults they quietly put the beating stick away. And they had a moment of self-introspection because it really Aww. was their fault, you know? They thought, maybe we should pay more attention. They did not beat her like they said they were going to. And since that day, the mysterious fires had been extinguished. You go, girl. You go, girl. You go, approaching science. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. So from now on, like honey. Freaking reconnecting families. <laughs> For real, dude. <laughs> if you ever say that you feel lonely, your ass is gonna be a little hot. <laughs> that was a wholesome episode. Yeah. This one's not wholesome though. What? Yeah, Which one? Oh. The real life vampire. Do you believe in it? Vampire? No. Nah. <laughs> I don't believe in vampire either. Really? It's just, I really there's wish. too many like variations. Yeah. Like, there's too many shows. Yeah. Vampire Diaries? And yeah. you know, there's too many phones. Like if you were a vampire, someone's gotta post a TikTok of like, I went on a date with a vampire mm, true yeah this is how it went right or like today i learned or today i fucked up am i the asshole for not letting a vampire suck my bud you know what i mean and there's got to be a social media post somewhere for sure or on the news yeah but i believe in like spiritual vampires <clears throat> oh yeah no 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 the ones that suck the energy out of you okay yeah i, I agree on that so this next story is about the real life vampire no I'm being dead ass. They really called him the magic man that spits blood, but he was a vampire. He can spit out blood anywhere, anytime, and he can suck the blood from his own skin. So what he would do is he would suction cup his arm like this and suck the blood out of his arm, spit it out, and then wipe the blood from his arm, and there would be no scars. Wow. Yeah. Dang. Real all you can life. eat. All you, all can, you eat. Can, <laughs> can eat. He can suck the blood from his own skin, and it doesn't even leave a scar. And it's like he can just suck it out, and his skin heals. There's no hole, nothing. It's bizarre. Is this divine magic, or is this guy seriously a vampire? Let me take you to 2006. A famous newspaper posted an article that started freaking out a bunch of the readers. A 30-year-old wonder man could spit out blood at will and could suck blood out of his skin. You already know who read that newspaper. Approaching science. They said, wait a minute, what the f***? They're like, vampire who? We're going to go, oh, bless your soul. Bless you, bless you. So they went in and immediately started interviewing the guy's friends. They didn't even go to the vampire himself. They went to all of his friends. Let's call him Vlad the Vampire. They're interrogating Vlad's friends and coworkers because, let's be real, they think Vlad is some sort of con man. They try to cut to the chase before they waste an episode on this. But even the reporter who wrote the initial article told the producers it was the first time. I had seen something like that. He had spit out the blood. I mean, I almost fainted from fear. I had never seen anything like that. I 
personally searched his body beforehand. I searched everywhere inside his mouth. He had no props, no gadgets, no fake blood, nothing. And even on top of that, it wasn't even a little bit of blood. It was so much blood. <laughs> and all the while, the guy has blood in between his teeth and blood dripping out of his mouth. And he's looking at me and he's laughing. So the producers, they're a little bit creeped out. But again, they still assume the con man like I mean, you probably didn't suck his mouth that much he's mm -hmm. trying to get famous so that he could charge for like these blood spitting shows later on it's he's hustling us mm -hmm. he's probably using blood props do you mm -hmm. know how blood props work so it's like a little pill or a little baggie and you put it near the back of your teeth and after you get punched in the face in a movie you bite on it and blood starts oh, pouring out yeah and then you got blood spitting out, you're coughing it out, right? It's really cool. Um, it's edible, it's TV blood, it looks like real blood. It's very nasty tasting, I heard, but it's fine. And you pop it in your mouth. So they're like, okay, it's gotta be that. So the producers, they started experimenting with the blood props and it made total sense. I mean, the whole thing looked very real. The blood looked real and as long as your face was matching, it was very believable. Mm. But just to prove their theory, the producers went to the village where Vlad lived and asked to interview him. Other villagers said, Vlad is weird. Not just because he spits out blood, but he seems to have this superhuman strength, like this crazy ability. I mean, he could carry more than 110 pounds like it was no problem at all. While other villagers were struggling, he would just throw 110 pounds of rice on his head and walk around. Yeah, we called him Hercules. Hercules. Yeah. Okay, so now it sounds like this dude is like a scammer scammer, right? So the producers, they bring him out into an open field, like an open space that they've already vetted. They check inside his mouth to make sure there's no blood props, and then they were certain there was nothing. And they're like, okay, do your thing. He closed his eyes. They said it was like he was about to start doing yoga or something, okay? Like... <laughs> Like he's meditating. And about 40 seconds later, he opened his eyes. And his face contorted into this red expression. And slowly, as he's doing this, blood started dripping out. <laughs> like a lot of blood. An uh -huh. alarming amount of blood. If you saw this on the street, you'd be like, that person's fucking dying. Call an ambulance. A lot, of, just all the way down. And they're like, oh, what do we do? They felt scared, but also, do we need to call an ambulance? Are we liable for this? But Vlad kept going, and he said, give me a bucket. As long as I spit out this blood, I can bring more blood out. <laughs> There's more in there. I need to let out. Dang. So they let him spit out the blood and inspected his mouth, and sure enough, still no props or anything. He went on to spit out more blood, and then there was more. He grabbed his arm, suction cupped like a fucking octopus tentacle and just sucked the blood from his arm and spit it out. When he was done, he wiped the blood. No scar. What? Dang. How do you explain <laughs> that, Dan Dan? How do you explain that, y'all? He probably had a tat, like a sticker. A like, what? It looks like a human skin. And he put it around. Ah, ah, that is some magician smart. stuff. Yeah. That's smart, okay. Oh. But what about in the mouse? He just like bit his tongue or something. Hmm, but it's a mm. lot of blood. Ah oh, man, Bro, I don't bitting know. tongue is so painful, dude. It really is. It's the worst. <laughs> what do you think? I think he's like sick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. 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 Like, but sick, it, you know. But he said that there's no symptoms. Like he doesn't ever feel pain. He never really has any health issues. Maybe he's just one of those that people that produce too much blood. Mm. Huh. You know what I mean? Just too much. Or I don't you know, know. It reminds <clears throat> me of you. Every year, for oh, one yeah. month, like a f***ing vampire, he gets nose, the most dramatic nosebleeds. Oh. Twice like, a day. Twice a day Whenever I wash my face, it just goes like crazy. It's like water faucet. On the plane right here, he had a nosebleed. What? Yeah. yeah. And it's bad because I don't want to freak people out. Just Can you imagine you're on a plane and someone <laughs> just slowly... <laughs> Can yeah. you imagine? Is this like a seasonal thing? Or yeah. is it like it's just condition? when it gets dry. It's just when he has to let out all the demons inside of his <laughs> body once a year. So anyway, um, just like the original article said, there was no blood props, none. I mean, what that doesn't even make sense, right? No scars. Vlad is calm. He looked a little uncomfortable because of the taste of blood, but he said he wasn't even in pain. It's like this itch in my throat. And when I spit out the blood, I feel a special taste in my mouth. And it's like a little bit of salty, a little bit of sweet. And then I don't feel uncomfortable anymore. But even when you don't know where the blood is coming from, 
there's like no physical change so I don't feel sick I don't feel like something changed I don't have headaches dizziness nothing I feel completely normal and then I just spit out blood the producers were baffled I mean can someone really spit out the blood from their own body without any problems without something being wrong with them no pain so they bring in, um, oh, by the way, Vlad said it started when he was eight years old. Like he woke up one morning to spit out blood and he was terrified. They took him to the doctor, his parents did, and they were like, nothing's wrong with him. Hmm. So for the rest of his life, this is what would happen. Yeah. Fascinating. It's weird. The producers consulted their own doctors, experts, and they were told that there's just no way. The minute that someone starts splurting out blood from their mouth to this degree, this volume of blood, they've got a serious internal problem that needs to be addressed. It is impossible for someone to spit out this much blood and be happy, golly, healthy. Because they're probably dying on the inside. So the doctors expressed concern for the validity of these claims. So the producers invited them to meet with Vlad and see for themselves. The doctors asked him if they could examine his skin. They could take x-rays of his internal organs. They could take the blood samples so that they could test it in the lab, right? The blood sample came back positive as Vlad's blood. It was not a prop. So at this point, they brought in a dentist because they were bringing in all sorts of doctors, right? Because they had no solution. Why? Is the next part like freaky? The guy had gingivitis. That's when your gums bleed a lot. <laughs> but th by that much? So that's what they said. They were like, mm, still doesn't make sense because he bleeds way too much, right? <laughs> they compared the amount of blood to another patient who had gingivitis and they concluded that he bleeds way too much, yeah, right? Yeah. For having gingivitis. So maybe it's not gingivitis, right? The doctors and the dentists, they started examining him more and what they found out was that um, apparently his blood was very thin. Vlad's blood <laughs> was very thin. And so the amount of bleeding was nowhere near the same as regular patients of gingivitis. Mm. Yeah. So the whole time he's sucking blood out of his... And gums. <laughs> and when they pried open his mouth, his gums were really inflamed. They looked like angry sharks, his gums. Oh my god. Yeah, but he never felt the pain. So he's like trolling everyone. No, he didn't know. He didn't know? He didn't know he had gingivitis. He found oh, out that day and he oh. was like, Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I thought everybody feels pain in their gums. Um, oh. Oh. Yeah. Huh. But uh, that still doesn't make sense. The pink, the small blood. Yeah. Oh, and when he was sucking? Yeah. It was just from his mouth. But he feels like he's sucking from the Yeah. Arm. So he is sick. He is sick for sure. Very sick, actually. Um, can I just say that I really hate dentists when they do that? Have you ever had that experience when you're sitting in a dentist chair and they're literally giving you so much pain, pulling out teeth, just destroying you, and your gums start bleeding? And they're like, it's because you don't floss. Bruh. Who says that? Literally, my dentist has said that like three fucking times to me. Really? And I bleed so much from my gums. And they keep telling me it's because I don't floss enough. Maybe and that I is why. I swear it's floss. not. It's what do you because mean? they're fucking drilling in, in my mouth. No, but of course I'm gonna bleed. The next one is properly creepy, let me tell you. Like, actually creepy. The response. <clears throat> it's just creepy. There was a rumor going around that in 2006, in a small town, a bunch of children were known to have a third eye. A third eye. They were born with a third mm. eye. Yeah. Okay. And uh, they were trained, and in the right environment, they could do superhuman things. Okay, to be fair, they weren't out here like Iron Man. They weren't out here like Hulk, but rather, they just had this sixth sense, if you will. There was a 10-year-old that could read words on the <clears throat> board when he was blindfolded. Mm. He could ride a bike blindfolded and never bump into anything. Wait, so there's is there an eye on their face or no? No, 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 no. Like oh, so it's like, a, it's like a saying. Like a saying. Oh, yeah, it's like a, I have things. a third nipple. It's like a saying. <laughs> but you do. Oh, <laughs> yeah. shit. All okay. the town residents, you know, watched them do it, and it was real. They would be blindfolded, standing in front of a whiteboard. Sure enough, through the blindfold, they could read what was being written on the wall. That's weird. Hold up fingers in front of my face. <clears throat> Go. Three. Whoa! The f Wait, really? Yeah. Are you are you Wait, peeking? You're I'm peeking. Not, I guess. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, five. Four. Wait, what the what? Four? It was five. Yes. Try again. Try again. Okay, one more okay. time. One more time. Two. What the? <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Oh, oh my god. god. Okay. How do you start that? <laughs> the teachers saw it. The professors saw it from local colleges. They would come and they see it. The parents saw it. The residents of the village, they saw it and they all agreed. There was something about these children. Some of the villagers even said that this was going to save China. <laughs> Let me tell you how. It's like a really bizarre way, but um, most Chinese students, younger students, are nearsighted because they um, strain their eyes too much trying to read because they're all studious. Mm. So if all the Chinese students could be trained to read blindfolded, how healthy would everybody's eyes be? It would save China. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> the village is it would save China. It will. Okay, um, that's what they said. So, you know, of course, approaching science was like, we would like to investigate. And investigate yeah. they did. They were like the <laughs> Ghostbusters. <or something. laughs> they were like the heroes of China. <laughs> <laughs> so they went to go meet with the students who were all being trained in this special <laughs> local school that was only for kids. And, you know, they, they had the third eye training. Kids had super normal capabilities. And the first proof was the teacher would blindfold all the students in front of the producers. They would draw a circle on the board, anywhere on this big board, and the children would walk up blindfolded and find the circle and would draw ears and faces in the circle where the Whoa. eyes would be and yeah. What? Like perfectly. Mm hmm No way. So they would do it. No pressure, no stress. Okay. Nothing. They drew the face. Not one of them missed the circle. Confusing. So then the reporter wrote three Chinese characters on the whiteboard and each child was brought up separately so they couldn't hear each other and they would get a new character and they would all guess it correctly. When one of the producers asked the children, how do you know what, what, what was written on the board? Mm -hmm. He just responded cryptically, I just feel it. <laughs> Another child said, I can see it like a light inside my brain. <laughs> Okay, creepy. Is this really some sort of third eye, a supernatural occurrence? At this point, the producers, they want to talk to the main teacher that teaches these students the gifted powers, right? And let's call him Mr. Ma. He told the producers, it all started 10 years ago. I was taken in by a great master. I was his apprentice. He devoted himself to research and exercise, and he taught me how to read blindfolded. And I realized that other children can be trained, too, to have these special talents in the future. Okay. You know, the human brain is just not fully developed yet, and the potential of human beings is unlimited. This is the most advanced scientific research in the world. What I am doing in this village. The Third Eye Children. He later opened up a training course that cost $700 a semester for the students to come to learn how to read blindfolded. So in front of all the producers, the children, they did it, and it made sense. There would be times where producers would bring out a bill, and they'd guess $20, $100, and they would write. What? One time a producer took a blindfolded child into the street, stopped him in front of a shop, and asked him to read the sign up there. And the boy looked up blindfolded and said, Hongdae watch shop. And it was right. Imagine I'm like, it, it was actually a Chipotle. Chipotle! No, he was right. So now they're like, okay, this is weird. They, he, they turned him around. What car just drove by? A white van. He was right. <laughs> he was right. And he was blindfolded. So this is insane. Eventually, the producers, they invited a big world-renowned guest to the show called... Mr. N, and he was going to watch the children's performance and analyze it. Mr. N was almost known as like a superstition killer in China. Like his biggest thing was to just kill these random pseudoscience fake news type bullshit. The blindfold, they can actually see through it. Just a little bit. You know how like mm. some blindfolds, you can see a glimpse of it? Mm. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. That would be very obvious mm. if that's the thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the game show you told me about. Someone's coughing on the side. <laughs> <laughs> like the number, like just someone's like giving them some sort of signal on the side, like by coughing or something, mm. like communicating with, communicating with them without people noting. But how can you draw a perfect face, like human face? You just need to know where, like left, right, up, down, like. That's too much work, you know? Like, too much work. <laughs> too much work. Like, why would you go through that Not stress worth. just Not for worth. like draw a face? I think they're cheating. Somehow. So the producers decided this time they were not going to let the school know when they were bringing in the experts. So they showed up at a random ass day and they brought in Mr. N and the children were brought into the classroom blindfolded. And Mr. N sat there as the children were brought up to the board in rapid pace to look at the board and read the words off the board. So the first child goes up. 
He reads it correctly. And Mr. N is like, did you really not see it with your eyes? The child said, no. I saw it with my mind. <laughs> a, light just, a light just came on into my mind. Okay, well, I'm going to take a card and put it in front of you, right? So he takes a random card, puts it in front of her. What's the word on the card? It had the Chinese word feng written on there, which meant wind. And he put it up to the child's face and said, do you recognize this word? Cloud. And Miss Tran goes, but the rest of the class erupt into applause. Yeah. So he, the person gave the word wind, yeah. but the kid reads cloud. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're kind of associated. Yeah. But... So then he put another thing, right? next to the ear and um, the child the word said table and the child said so confidently fire <laughs> and the whole class burst into applause what yeah and mr n is so confused so he puts another word soil and the child confidently with a smile proclaims water and the whole class burst into applause <laughs> Wait, what? and mr mm. n is so freaking confused it felt like everybody in the class was brainwashed or playing some sort of weird game and they brought up another child and he was blindfolded this time they tried to do the same thing to him but the child he seemed distracted and stressed and he told the teacher mr ma again not today not today <laughs> i'm not in a good state so mr ma decided to try and put the card in a box so you know, they could read. And asked the child to repeat the word. But just like the first kid, he kept getting it wrong. And in the end, Mr. N, the expert, stood up and asked, Mr. Ma, how come all these children are getting it wrong? Good question. It's because their physical capabilities and stability is not good today. You should have come tomorrow. Huh. She can do this for sure. Just not today. You know, it depends on their state, that's all. But no worries, we can try something else. And Mr. Ma lined up all the children in front of the board and drew a figure at the bottom and asked the kids to tell him what the figure at the bottom was. But before he let them answer, because you know their physical state is not good today, he would massage all of their necks and their shoulders, right? And he would get them ready, like a wrestler or a boxer. You know how they always have people massaging them and they're all like doing this with their neck? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what they were doing. Interesting. And this time, all the kids guessed the figure correctly on the board. What do you think happened? It's a magical massage. He was massaging mm. the kids? Mm-hmm. Maybe he massaged it. Uh -huh. Like, maybe two squeeze is mm. like B. Mm. <laughs> Four squeeze is D. Okay, uh. I like it. Huh? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all the kids guessed it correctly. So Mr. N said, wait, 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 wait. Why are you all massaging their necks, right? And the child interrupted said, I can't feel it unless I raise my head. What? What do you mean you can't feel it? I have to move around so I can see it in my brain, inside my mind. So the producers, they were very skeptical. They asked to borrow the blindfolds that the children were using and they tried it themselves. And sure enough, anytime they massaged each other and did this with their neck, they could peep out the nose hole. Oh <laughs> my god. Onto bro. The board and read what was written on there. And the scam had been exposed. It was all a lie. And when the producers were coming announced, they would literally have like the coughing thing and like they would scam it all. And the reason why they said the reason that people can't see through the tricks is because the performers are children. Everyone feels like children are too innocent than to go along with something like this. What? Yeah. That's it? So there you have it. That was it? That was it. Wow. The scam was exposed, but the producers went <sighs> to the teacher, Mr. Ma, and they didn't tell him that they know about his little scam. And they said, so you, what do you think it is? It's like magic in this town? <laughs> and he said, well, I don't know if it's magic. <laughs> I don't really know what it is. I can't tell you yet. And that is the story of that. I got one last one. Okay, this one's really creepy. Um, let's talk about the walking corpses. Okay, so for some reason, this story sent a chill down my body because I think the truth is actually more sinister and dark. Like, there is no cute hee-hee-ha-ha -ha wholesome moment in this one. Mm. So there are villages in china where it is not easy to get one from one village to another there are no roads for cars there's no trains like you might have a train to the closest part but mm -hmm. you have to walk through these crazy like terrain like up and down mountains you literally have to risk your life to get to that next village 
So think about it. Let's say I live in village A and you live in village B and I'm going to visit you, mm -hmm. but I f die in village B. Then what? All the rest of my family are in village A. Like, how is my body going to get there for them to bury me? And villagers, these villagers were very, you know, into burial and giving them like a family plot of land to, you know, rest in peace in. So how do you, how do you suppose they get the body to the next village? There's no car. There's no train. It's a dead body. He said, what about flying? Bruh. Teleporting. Tell, I like it. <laughs> what do you think, honey? Call those kids. <laughs> Call those kids? Oh, the third eye kids? <laughs> uh. <laughs> they have these people called corpse handlers. Mm. They will deliver corpses. You pay them and they'll bring you a corpse. So two soldiers were out in the village one day, and this is a real story, and they were about to head back to, you know, their base to report back. And since they were in the village areas, they had to walk to their base. And on their way at night, they saw a really weird sight of four people just lined up walking in a line through the mountains in the midst, mist and they were wearing like olden day clothes. Like, you know, kind of like, almost like those robes with those straw hats. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like the olden day Chinese clothes? Yeah. It was just very out of time. And they thought it was really creepy the way that they were walking in that straight line in quiet, no talking, just, it was a very creepy feeling. The soldiers weren't due to come back to their base yet. So they decided, let's just investigate because imagine something really bad is happening. We catch on, we're gonna get promoted or whatever. So they follow the four people. They look like they're zombies, if they're being honest. Now, it was winter time. They see the four people check into like a boarding house in the middle of this like random nowhere. So they decide that they're gonna check in too. And once they were already in the room, the soldiers went to the front desk at this hotel and they're like, hey, who the hell are those people? Oh, you don't know? It's a corpse handler. One of the guys is alive and he's the corpse handler. The other three are, well, they're dead people. What? The soldiers are like, what? Yeah, so when people die outside their village, they need to get back to their hometown village to be buried. And if they don't, they'll haunt the village. They'll roam around trying to get back home, never finding their spot. And they are not friendly ghosts because imagine if you can't get home, would you be friendly? So we have these corpse handlers and they'll bring the bodies back to the village that they're supposed to be and they can be laid to rest. Wait, but you said they were walking. Yeah. They were all walking. Yeah. But three of them are dead. Three of them are dead. <laughs> what? So yeah. one of them killed them. No, no, no. It had to be. They were dead people walking. Oh, no. Is what they're saying. Dead people walking. That's not possible. That's what the soldiers are thinking. That's not possible. So the corpse handler is walking in front, guiding the three dead people back to their hometown. <laughs> but they're walking like they're straight up just being a tour guide to take these dead people home. The soldiers don't believe it. I mean, that's not real. They've seen shit. They've been at war. They've seen some shit. Okay, this is not believable. How does a corpse even walk? It doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. So the soldiers decide to stay in the hotel as well to see if they could, you know, sneak up on the corpses. Like, I don't know, hanging out. Like maybe it's a troll. Maybe it's a bunch of alive people dressed up weird. Mm -hmm. They book a room across from the corpse hand, mm -hmm. literally right across. All night, they don't see anything. The next morning, they go to a local shopkeeper to ask them about the corpse handlers. Psst. What do you know about the corpse handlers? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, do you want to be one? Oh, I don't know if you guys can be one. What do you mean, why can't we be one? You know, there are rules, you know, to be a corpse handler. Rules, what kind of rules? Well, the first is to be courageous. For those who learn how to drive corpses, it's called corpse driving. <laughs> um, they learn from their masters and their masters would put something in a cemetery and ask them to go get it at night. And if you fail that first test, then you can't be a corpse handler because you're not courageous. The second step is to be physically very strong. Some corpse handlers can't stop walking for dozens of miles a day. So you have to be able to withstand all of that. The third one is really peculiar, but you have to be ugly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> We're qualified. <laughs> Why? Well, handsome people just can't do the job because only ugly people can suppress the ghosts and the monsters. Mm. It's like they're scared of the ugly. <laughs> 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 okay. Wait, I, I still don't get it though because I mean, fine, that's the rules of the jobs, but corpses can't walk. Ah. Uh, well, I guess that's the first skill you have. You actually can learn to make them stand. And then there's three things that you have to do. You have to command a corpse to stand. And the second skill is to teach them how to walk. And then the third skill is the hardest, but for some reason, corpses have a hard time turning. So, you know, and you gotta make a right turn. 
Yeah, that's the hardest thing to teach them while they're walking. Oh, wait, another detail. The corpse handler can't sleep at night, so they have to go days without sleeping because they have to guard the dead. They even carry around buckets so they, they can pee in it at night. They can't take their eyes off the corpses. It takes a lot of patience, you know? Wow. Honestly, mm. the soldiers, the more they listened, the more confused they were because they were like, that's still, nobody's fucking answering my question because corpses can't walk. Are you guys drinking some Kool-Aid over here? They can't walk. It just doesn't make sense. So they decide to just figure it out themselves. They go back to the hotel and they start knocking on the door of the corpse handler. When the door cracks open a tiny bit, they boom, shove up in the door and they rush in. They bombard the room. They saw a few dishes on the table and there were three motionless dead bodies in the corner. <laughs> so they checked the pulses. They were dead bodies. Yeah. What? They were dead. Are they start interrogating me? the corpse handler. Who are these dead bodies? Who are you? How are you doing this? I'm a corpse handler. These are corpses. They're dead. They were not getting the answers that they wanted, but what could they do? The next day, they decide to try again. They knock on the door, burst through in, more dishes, they're eating more, right? And now they knew that this corpse handler was suspicious because yesterday he was in his 40s and today he was in his 20s. It was a completely different dude. Wait, so what? they're like, you know what? Something's fishy here. Fuck you guys. We're taking you to the cops. Mm -hmm. They literally fake arrest these handlers, bring them to the local police station, and that is when Approaching Science gets involved. Even the local police station was like, they're just corpse handlers. I don't know what, why are you bringing them here? Yeah, you soldiers. Approaching Science is everywhere. Yeah. Dang. Damn. Yeah, they're like, you soldiers need to get it together. You've never seen a corpse handler? You guys need to get out more. Where do you live? In like a village or something? <laughs> God. In like a city or something? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think the truth is? They're not really humans. They're really? not really humans. They're puppets. Actually, that doesn't make sense. But it's a real person. So they check the face, and it matches up with someone who died. And their family is like, yeah, that is, like, I hired these corpse handlers to bring them to me. Oh, so they are real dead people. Maybe they're dead people, real people, but inside they put a robotic leg and you control them. Robotic leg. Mm. Like a surgery. There is a surgery leg. But you're t we're talking about a village that doesn't even have roads for cars. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> said. They have like one donkey. <laughs> <laughs> donkey. <laughs> and you're like, they're robots. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking Transformers. It's a cyborg. It's know. Iron Man. Man. This is tough. That's yeah. where Elon Musk is building. Yeah. Elon Musk. <laughs> His fucking AIs. The AIs. But why did the guy went from 40 to 20? It's a different guy then. Mm -hmm. That's weird. I will, I will ask that, like, what happened to you? You got younger? <laughs> like, I'm starting with that. So that one is easy. It's actually two dead bodies, and there were two corpse handlers. One was the master, one was the apprentice. It was weird, yeah. Wait, 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 what? So it's four people. Initially, they thought it was three dead bodies and one corpse handler, but it's actually two corpse handlers and two dead bodies. Okay. What yeah, but that still mean? two dead bodies. But they usually like to work alone, otherwise they're not as legit. So you're asking how are the body moving? Yeah, yeah, but like there's still two dead bodies, so. Yeah, how are they moving? Yeah. Okay, so hear me out. <laughs> no. When I was young, oh no, we had these like parades like every year. Yeah. One of the show or whatever they do, every part of your body. Imagine this chopsticks, right? Tie this chopsticks to your arm, and then I attach another chopstick human behind you. Okay. So every time you move your arm, like a puppet, you will pull their arm. Oh. So every time you walk, you're pulling their leg. Every time you pull your arm, you're pulling their leg. Am I right? Literally. Wait, wait. Am yes. I two. Oh, am I right? That's why there's two and there's two dead bodies. Yes. They're, co they're controlling. They're behind the body. Literally, yes. What? No, but get this. But there's... that's still really hard, though. Dang. Really hard. Because like you, you're moving another human with you. Dead weight, right? Yeah. Mm. So... This is where it gets weird. Um. Corpse handlers are, it's a business at the end of the day. Uh -huh. They're getting paid. So they would find out, okay, Dan Dan is this weight, this height. Yeah. And they would make a body out of straw and put stuff clothes with straw. And then they would go into your grave or wherever you were dead, not your grave, but they would go to your dead body, cut off your head, Cut off your hands, cut off your feet, attach it to the straw body, Ooh. and walk you home. Oh, that's why. That's what I'm saying. Like, there's no way you can pull a, another body. Oh. 
so it's like the, what are those grass men? Yeah, straw, uh, straw scarecrows. Man. Scarecrow, scarecrow. but straw, it, with yeah. like real human head and yeah, that makes sense. Oh my god, yeah. that is kind of freaky. And they would bring you to the family where you would be buried. But then the family will realize what happened. Yeah, they don't care. Wow. It was all an illusion. Wow. I guess family also just want, kind of want like this being. Yeah. Maybe they take, they treat it as like, I want this spirit or the process of bringing yes. my body back. And they're back. walking home, like walking oh. back. It's like this final, I'm coming home. Mm. But um, at what cost, right? It is a business, but at what cost? Because most corpse handlers die very young. Some say it's because the ghosts of the corpses that follow them around. Because imagine you decapitate me. I will f***ing haunt you. <laughs> I'll f***ing do it, okay? I will call approaching science. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to debunk you. <laughs> to debunk oh. my haunting. Yeah. Um, but others say, approaching science says, it's because they deal with a lot of mercury. Because oh, after they decapitate yes. and they need to preserve mm -hmm. the hand and the legs in after mercury. dismembering, so they do it in mercury. And they all have mercury poisoning and they're overworked. See, that's what I'm saying. Approaching science will debunk everything yeah. for you, okay? I'm, I'm gonna take them to the haunted hotel and they will debunk the hotel. Yeah. Yo, can we actually hire one? <laughs> Approaching science. Approaching yeah. science. How do we even get that? It's I don't amazing. think we have a budget for that. Uh, but... Oh, it's that expensive. I don't think it's that. They're they're out of business then. Yeah. They're oh, gone. they oh, must be come? cheap now. The show is Dead, gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. People said <laughs> fuck science. We want more conspiracy. <laughs> yes. And then mukbang was born. Ba da da. <laughs> <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> So, uh, what do you guys think? Did you guys guess all of these? And do you guys want another episode? Because I am loving these. Let me know in the comments. And make sure to check out Case Divine. Link in the description. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!